Hello there, World of Tankers, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Drudels Blitz, and in today's video, I'll be playing in the American Tier 10 Heavy, the T-57 Heavy, and comparing it to the M6O, another American Heavy. And funny enough, both of them are auto-loading heavies as well. But that's where the similarities stop. The guns on these tanks, the armor profiles, and overall playstyles are very different. So, if you are wondering what should I go for, the T-57 Heavy or the O, in today's video I'll be letting everything you need to know. We're going to start off briefly talking about the grind. Getting to the 57 Heavy is a bit more painful, but there is a bit of an advantage. If you grind for the light tank, being the Chaffee, you can get to the T-49. And then you can split from the T-49 to the T-92E1 and grind to the Sheridan. And you can go to the 54E1 and get the 57 Heavy. The reason I would say the 57 Heavy grind is a little painful is because the T-54E1 is personally not my favorite vehicle. And while it does have some strengths, it also has a lot of weaknesses, which can make it very uh, frustrating to play. On the other hand, the Yo, well, the grind is actually really good, except for the Tier 7. The M7 Yo is probably one of the worst Tier 7s in the game, but thankfully it's a low tier. You're not going to play it too long. Once you get the M3 Yo, that tank's fantastic. It's got a super dangerous clip, great turret armor, very enjoyable to play. The M5 Yo also features a very dangerous clip. It's got a pretty troll armor profile and honestly is super dangerous with either gun you run. And then you get the M6 Yo, which is obviously fantastic. So we are going to start today's video off with the T57 Heavy. This vehicle features a three shell clip, 2,750 DPM, and it is able to deal 1,200 damage in around 4.5 seconds if you are running shell reload boost, and it is, actually no, it's around 3.5 seconds with shell reload boost, because it's five seconds base. It's kind of a dangerous vehicle in that regard. It has 360 mils of heat pen with calibrated, and if you're not running Cali, you're you're just kind of running the vehicle wrong, I'm going to be honest. You should always go for penetration on your auto loaders. Yes, you can get a little bit more DPM and accuracy. It's kind of like running a small food on your uh, auto loaders if you put vents on. But there's really no reason to do vents when you have so much of your damage riding and penning all three of your shots. So we are going to obviously make our way over towards the medium route. I also need to scooch my chair in a bit. I uh, pulled it pretty far back to clean my room earlier today. Alrighty. Well, what do we have up against us? A 60 TP, an E100, and a VZ55 in terms of heavies. They also have a lot of dangerous tank destroyers, though, being a Object 268, a Grill, and a 183. My dog is uh, standing next to me. What are you doing here, Harley? Either way, we are going to cross. This crossing always gets me a little sus, but we are all clear, it would look as of right now. We're going to climb up here, and we are not spotted. We do have a Progetto. Nothing is detecting us. Okay, that means, in my opinion, that we are in the clear. The Prog may have already deleted himself, but that shouldn't matter too much. We have the 268. He's going to pen me, and the 268 hits pretty hard for about 688, but... We just did 1,100 damage to that 268. We still have 1,800 health left. That player has 700 health left. I think you can see where autoloaders are a little bit stupid. And we even low rolled. We should have dealt about 1,200 damage, but our shots didn't roll as high as they could have. So we have the enemy 183 in front of us. He gets spotted. We're going to aim in right on his track wheel. There you go. One easy tracking shell. We get another easy tracking shell. And there you go. That right there is 1,200 damage. A full health 183 with the help of one other teammate is now dead. Wow, that is uh, 2,400 damage dealt. And again, it shows why this vehicle is a little bit stupid. In five more seconds, we will have our clip loaded. And in those five seconds, uh, hopefully somebody's going to drive out into the open here. And we're going to be able to get some shells out. Doesn't look like that's the case yet. However, this 268 is most definitely a goner. Goodbye. Now we reload the clip. Much more beneficial to reload, and then once we get this clip ready, we can absolutely dump. You'll also notice when we get our shells, we are going to have shell reload boost ready. Very, very similar in time. So we're just going to wait about five seconds or so. The grill's in the back, and he's about to get probably crapped on, but I guess we'll find out. I don't really care about the grill, to be honest. Um, oh, wow, that 60 got nuked. All right, well, I'm going to focus, honestly, the grill. <laughs> like, dude's got the perfect amount of health for us to clip. 
So we're just going to push straight towards him here. We're going to put on our shell reload boost. We got one shell in, two shells in, and as long as we don't low roll, we kill him for 1,189 hit points. I mean, we're at 4,000 damage. And the amount of effort I've had to put in for this 4,000 damage is not a lot, to be honest. It's, it's actually quite a little. So... We have the 183, we got we got a lot of people pushing different tanks here. Um, E100's kind of just driving in, so I'm just going to aim it on the side of the E100. We got one pen, we got two pens, and I'm kind of being squished here, but we still got it out. I don't feel too bad about being in front of the, v the type because he didn't have a shell anyway. Either way, uh, this was probably the easiest 5k I've had in a very long time. And, you know, for the people that say, oh, the 57 Heavy got nerfed, it doesn't have as much pen, it doesn't have as much DPM anymore, I think this game perfectly illustrated why the nerf really did not hurt the vehicle. In fact, it kind of helped it, because it got more armor on the hull and on the turret, allowing it to be a lot troller to pen, hence the girl bouncing us with one of his shells. 4,902 damage, 1,160 blocked, a first class, and literally a walk in the park. This tank is a blast to play, and I can easily say it is one of the best tier 10s available. So far, I've played three battles in this vehicle, and I'm going 4,800 average damage, which is kind of crazy. And now we break over to the M6 Show, which is another absolutely crazy tank. Now, you have two different gun options for this vehicle. You have a double shot, which deals 900 damage in 1.71 seconds, or... You have a triple shot, which deals 900 damage in 5 seconds. The advantage of the triple shot is it reloads 7 seconds faster on the clip. It has 500 more DPM, much better dispersion, much better aiming time, even better penetration. So, in all regards, the triple shot on paper seems a heck of a lot better. Why do I prefer the double shot? Well, it's all about trades. Let's say that uh, Bobby McDooferson is in front of me and he's in a T-62A. Well... There's no way he's getting away in 1.7 seconds. There's very little moments where somebody's going to be able to poke you within 1.7 seconds back in the cover. And because of that, you can easily get 900 damage out basically any time somebody makes a play in this vehicle. Where with the triple shot, 2.5 seconds for each shell means 5 seconds in total. And there are definitely a lot of situations where people will be able to back up within those 5 seconds. The 57 Heavy feature shell reload boost, which is very nice, and so does the Yo. But you also have reticle calibration on this tank, which means that you can have basically Leopard 1 accuracy while having the damage of a 183 in 1 1.7 seconds. I personally think that that's really insane, and uh, because of that, it's the major reason why I really, really like the Yo. So we're going to drive up this hill here, and we got an enemy E50 right in the open, and this is where that double shot mechanic is stupid. There you go, E50, 800 health, gone. We bled 400 for it. What well, that's absolutely worth, judging that the uh, the E50 is out of the game now. So, that's a dub. We also know that they have tanks coming up the hill because we got shot at. So, that's also a dub. We can see the Waffenflagger off to the side. Dude literally killed himself already. So, great play there. Alright, we're not going to worry about him at all. The T92 is off to the side. We also got the WZ113. There's one shell into his tank and two shells. That is 765 HP taken off. And again... What is that player going to do to counter that? If we were in the triple shot, yo, there's no way we would have been able to get that amount of damage out that fast. So we have the, uh, the yo in the back. We have a little bit longer on our clip. Oh, we're spotted. That's not what I want. All right, well, we got a damage Damarak, but that's fine. I'm not too worried, to be honest, because that guy's kind of boxed himself back there. We are going to focus on probably the mouse. I think that's really the uh, best target to go for here. We also have the 113 GFT. So we're just going to push on up, and we're going to see if we can get some shells into Le Mouse. Oh, is he going to push up himself? Oh, wait. Oof, that was a sad shell. All right, let's see. Is the 75 going to keep going? No, it does not look like that. All right, well, let's just aim in on the WZ, and let's get a free 416 damage shell. And now we reload. I see that the enemy go might try and take a shot at me. In fact, I may be backed into a really awkward situation here where I could end up dying. Thankfully, the mouse shoots HE, which is not going to do all too much. We're going to have to back up, though. And, yep, there you go. There's the yo shooting me. All right, well, that's really, really bad. All right, we're going to aim it on the mouse. We got one pen into his vehicle. He bounces me. We got two pens into his tank. That is 780 damage dumped off of his vehicle. And we're still doing pretty good in that regard. We're getting out damage, which is quite nice. We're just going to roll off to the side of the mouse. And we're going to use his dead body as cover against the enemy yo. This is actually really, really nice here. 
So we're going to wait here, and when this E75... Actually, you know what? We might just be able to shoot at the enemy yo at this point. There you... Oh, okay. Well, maybe not. Let's just... Let's just, I guess, miss that. All right. Well, we still have another shell on the yo. There you go. 487 damage. And that should have put us over 3k. It indeed did. Now, to be fair, this was a much more tricky situation than our previous one to get out damage. And I can't really blame the yo at all for this game. It was just a bit of a harder situation we had thrown at us here because of where we positioned our tank. But I can clearly say that the yo is still just as capable as the T-57 Heavy. At this point, all that's left is the enemy, yo. We're going to drive up this ridge. I was hoping we could get the shell out, but the 752 was able to beat us to the draw. Either way, pretty solid game. Over 3k for this tank as well. I would personally say that out of the two vehicles, I think the yo is better. And it's because of the fact that with that 450 alpha, you can bonk twice and back in the cover before your opponents have the time to react. It allows you to get out more damage and it allows you to be super dangerous but i also think the 57 heavy is an insanely strong vehicle and i would only put it like one notch below the yo it's just that the yo has more gun depression it has a better turret for poking hull down uh, and because of that it's just a little bit more comfortable to drive this tank but i would definitely say the gun on the 57 heavy when used in a prime situation is way better than anything the yo has so let me know in the comments what you guys think either way both of these tanks are incredible. You don't want to mess with them. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.